and the artist's livelihood has since compelled me to speak of a trickle economy in the past, where the artist's investments in the industry seem much more substantial than the larger music companies, as the so-called trickles add up to enormous volumes. And in the case of uh, Bhojpuri industry in uh, Bihar, I was actually able to uh, quantify things to a certain extent. But I wasn't able to do that in Haryana. <coughs> in fact, it, it, it was quite difficult to quantify precisely the music companies. Uh, <coughs> in fact, though it was difficult to quantify precisely the music companies found in the artist a stable and enduring source of income ever since piracy touched alarming levels. The practice continues to this day when smaller companies depend heavily on the fee paid by the artists seeking their brand cachet. If a music company does not invest in the recording and the production of the music, does not even share the revenue with the artist, confining itself entirely to the distribution process, the question may be asked, what is the company doing? And you know, then the question is, uh, one may ask is, is it able to even effectively circulate and distribute the music? And uh, in which case, uh, the question, what is the music company doing, becomes uh, even more problematic. But there were some cases where I met uh, singers who had made uh, quite a decent kind of livelihood out of uh, uh, their cassettes, notably, not so much the uh, CDs or DVDs. But these were people uh, well past their middle age. So if one confines oneself to the live show economy, almost all the artists from Bihar admitted that their earnings come from two components. And this applies to Bihar as well as Haryana. One component uh, is, of course, the contractual fee, and uh, which is uh, very clear and uh, you know very uh, uh, <coughs> easy to find out. But the other component is something which uh, I, I was not taking seriously enough, uh, despite the quantities involved. That is uh, what we call inam, dakshish, etc., but which are actually live rewards. And uh, <coughs> I have had come to I uh, have. Uh, have to come to the conclusion that these are actually integral to the artist's income. It's a very rare occasion when an artist <coughs> doesn't get a bakshish. And uh, if, uh, not getting a bakshish carries a very, very negative meanings. It means uh, that the audience is positively, seriously unhappy uh, with your performance and not the other way. Which is why I want to uh, underline this thing a little bit. In the case of Bihar, uh, this process of rewards is not heavily ritualized. But in the case of the Sang and Ragini in Haryana, uh, there is something called Chamola. And I personally witnessed it on more than uh, one occasion. When the show is stopped, and then you know there's this whole list of uh, contributions uh, that come uh, from the audience, the names are read out. In fact, during the show, since I was sitting with a notebook, I was mistaken to be the uh, sort of record keeper for the film. <laughs> I had to clarify. <coughs> now this is called Chamola and it's uh, integral to the uh, Ragni and Sang form, the live shows. It would thus seem that bagging contracts for live shows must be the chief aim and preoccupation for an artist in Bihar in Haryana. The simple question to be asked here is, how do you go about it? The answer to this was found in a small but well-equipped recording studio in Sivan in 2009 and was reconfirmed at another studio in Gautak in 2014. More recently, a long conversation with Ranjay Babla of the Symphony Studio in Patna confirmed that the big music companies may not seem directly relevant to an average singer's income, but the value of the company label remains undeniable as proof of quality, talent, and status, thus determining the rates quoted for the live shows. Even when the artist cannot afford to buy the big label, he does need to have a good quality demo cassette in a limited edition to publicize his talent. This is why the Harmony Studio in Rotec, visited on three different days in 2014, never seemed out of work. The studio, according to its owner, because this was one of the queries during my field work, how come you know the CD DVD industry is dying in a sense, the sales are coming down, but the studios are still, uh, you know, new studios are opening all over the place and replicated. And uh, these studios depend entirely again on the entrepreneur. 
the artist and uh, his uh, financial backers who send him to the studio where he pays a fee for the recording, for a decent recording which you can then use as a demo cassette. Lastly, for this section, anyone familiar with the small town soundscapes in India knows the two facts relevant here. First, at any given moment, it is rarely possible to be out of the hearing distance of a loudspeaker. That includes uh, Jamia as well. Except <laughs> perhaps late at night. Second, that no religious function, major or minor, is complete without music unrelated to matters religious. Indeed, it may be claimed that all music, including quick paced erotic numbers played on religious occasions, become ceremonial by definition. If we go by the dictum that social meanings are determined by the context. And as I was writing these lines, uh, <coughs> I say, I can hear a distant loudspeaker accompanying a procession of Saraswati, the goddess of learning, but notably also of music. The deafening number to which everyone is dancing happens to be an Indian version of the global Ganganam style, with Bhojpuri words. Not surprising for the religious, for the regional artist, word of mouth publicity with some help from roadside music and ringtones is the real clincher. But we need to remember nevertheless that the career journey of the artist begins with an angel investor, a rich uncle, a wealthy mukhya or a family friend, or maybe uh, the artist himself as an angel investor. The next section is uh, the artist as a marketing manager. What is not common to Bihar and Haryana? While some of the above observations relate to what seems common to Bihar and Haryana, let's now uh, look at the uh, differences. Possibly the most obvious differences between the music economy of Bihar and Haryana is related to provenance. Bihari music is found not in Bihar alone, but nearly all over the country in small and big clusters and concentrations to its massive migrant populations. I even heard a young Bihari software engineer working in Britain claim that the best cure for a particularly fierce attack of homesickness <laughs> is not a sentimental tune from a Hindi film, but some matchingly vulgar Bhojpuri numbers from home available on YouTube. Indeed, just like Bhojpuri cinema, the music market among the Bihari populations took shape in the 1980s, 90s in the distant destinations before arriving and settling at home. The migrant male labor unaccompanied by his wife has however left an enduring mark on the salacious lyrics and the music played and practiced at home. <coughs> The second major difference uh, lies in how the Bihari and Haryani middle classes relate to their <coughs> local languages. And this is something I again want to emphasize. We just uh, described Hindi and its uh, dialects as some kind of a flat landscape. But what I found is something very striking. I have brought it up in uh, another discussion as well. The Bhojpuri people, the way they relate to Hindi uh, and uh, Bhojpuri is, I found, was quite different from the way the Haryani relate to uh, their own uh, dialect. In the, even in the sense of how often they use it. For example, uh, the on the Haryana campuses, and I uh, visited two of them when I spent quite a bit of time. The language commonly spoken was Haryani. Now, this is not something that you uh, find uh, uh, commonly in Bihar, even in the smallest of colleges. Uh, students uh, speak in Hindi. <coughs> but going be, uh, far beyond this, <coughs> to illustrate the point, after the initial phases of the Bhojpuri cinema in 60s and 70s, 1960s, 70s of course, the Bihari middle class has been hostile towards its own cinema. This is the interesting part of the Bihar story. This has closed parallels in music where over time the middle class has almost completely disowned its cassette and CD industries on the grounds of vulgarity. Unable to sustain its own traditional forms, ranging from the theatre to musical genres, from recent forms like cinema and music industries, the educated middle class is reduced to the role of an outsider, given to perpetual carping and outright rejection in the name of cultural critique. Ironically, however, according to a latest estimate, almost 90% of the singers in Bihar come from Brahmin and Yadav backgrounds. This again was very different uh, uh, or a great difference between Bihar and Haryana. In Haryana, there are, you know, these identifiable castes which have been in the musical uh, profession 
traditionally. So the cultural and linguistic gulf, I'm sorry, there will be some discontinuity because of the lack of time. I'm trying to summarize stuff, but maybe I'll be able to uh, remedy it during our discussion, if a discussion can take place. I have this time for it. So, uh, <coughs> both Vihar and Haryana show three distinct streams of musical production, the traditional folk, the city-based orchestral groups, and the eclectic and the posthumous uh, who mix folk and pop. But in the case of Haryana, the audience the taxonomy and the revenue generation process was quite distinct. In uh, Haryana, this is uh, again, I'll quickly discuss. In the case of Bihar, the uh, question who is the audience, who is the patron, get a little bit blurred. Whereas in the case of Haryana, there's a system in place. This is probably because, you know, Bihar is a state with uh, something like three or four Haryanas within it. Not just numerically, but uh, even culturally and linguistically. In the case of Haryana, uh, these, uh, these are the start, this is the startling part. Uh, the sponsors and occasions include the dozens of cow shelters in Haryana. This was a discovery. These are called Goshalas. These Goshalas have their own uh, economy. And uh, they sponsor these uh, Sahin Ragni shows and various other music shows. Sugar mills, schools, panchayats, temples, unusually enthusiastic college fests, Again, something very, very striking about Haryana. The colleges are all busy with festivals at, at different parts of the year. And uh, you, uh, you spend you know, significant amounts on uh, this. Then, you know, public works like road construction, dharmashala, digging of well or pond, sundry public occasions when the audience donate uh, <coughs> money. And during the Chamola uh, ceremony in the middle of the show, uh, the uh, the artist clearly announces so much money goes towards temple construction, well construction, and so much money goes to the artist. And uh, they sing it out, so it's part of the uh, genre, it's not uh, extraneous. <clears throat> On one occasion, when I got a chance to look at the accounts for an 11 day long sound show in the Baisari village, a single day's income for te temple construction was about 40,000 rupees. And this show went on for 11 days, so you can imagine the scales. I'll do a little bit of skipping over here. <coughs> so as I was saying, I'll leave the matters at that in Bihar, uh, something like 4,000 artists. This is a very rough estimate, uh, uh, <coughs> sort of uh, on the ground. And among them, 40 to 55 percent depend almost entirely on their earnings from music. This is a figure I got uh, very, very recently. And the top uh, 25 artists, mainly singers actually, and top tabla players, etc., they earn around 2 to 3 lakh rupees per month. So the earnings actually, uh, in the case of Haryana and Bihar, despite the, the economic disparity, become fairly comparable. <coughs> and I have a little bit, which I, I'm going to skip this again. I think, you know, I mean, I could have written a whole paper about Bhagwati Jagan in the North India because I think, you know, within, even within the music industry, it has its own uh, sort of uh, autonomous logic and industry. The conclusion part, uh, the <coughs> conclusion discussion, the extractive impulse in music, the economics of musical talent. Although the above sections dealt with the, I'll just read this out yes, okay. and I won't skip anything here. <coughs> Although the above sections dealt with the economic structures and routinized financial transactions, typical of the musical industries of Bihar and Haryana. No discussion on the media economy would be complete without due attention to the raw material sourced and processed by the music industry. This is also of direct import importance to an artist, entrepreneur, well aware that good voice, training and refined skills are only the container, not the content, to be filled with content. So the question, what is content and what is the uh, carrier? The art vehicle. The artist in our time has taken a number of successful and unsuccessful measures to ensure the recognition of her talent. As hinted earlier, traditionally popular music came to the audience as part of a context, whether seasonally or with function or specific community objective. With the immense growth of musical production, we no longer now need an excuse to listen to music. If someone asks you, uh, what are you doing? I'm listening to music. And no one uh, bothers to ask, why are you listening to music? what is the occasion. It's, it's a very normal state of being. So uh, the very nature of our musical experience has changed rather radically. So this allows the artist also to free 
traditional forms of their original context and rid music of its numerous protocols and ceremonial calendars. A good example of this was seen in the case of Ragini competition. This is a bit of a case study. These uh, Ragini competitions were big hits uh, till recently. And uh, after uh, something like a couple of decades of uh, massive growth, they seem to be de declining because, and people were very happy about it. Because, you know, uh, Haryana people said that, you know, how come a, someone from Bihar has come to study culture in Haryana? We only have agriculture, we have no culture. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what was uh, happening to the Ragni contest because all the contests were placed uh, in the fisticuffs because they were competing teams and they, they turned the whole thing into a battleground. So Haryani, the Kalcharati, they were very uh, relieved to see that this custom is going out of use. Whereas in the case of Bhojpuri, it has proved to be a success at least on the television channels. Because uh, it's on the, these are hurriedly uh, made points. In the, you know, the television channels, all the classes uh, almost get to meet. So uh, this is a very gentrified kind of a platform and location. Mm -hmm. So uh, although Bhojpuri music of a day is associated closely with a limited verbal and musical vocabulary, this is not how Bhojpuri mass culture was born in the 1980s. One explanation for this rise found within the trade is that, uh, for example, Manoj Tiwari, the first superstar of Bhojpuri music, became a trailblazer by mining those nooks and crannies of life in the region that uh, <coughs> belong to the private realm. So, which is why I've used the word extraction. By extraction, I mean uh, not just uh, uh, horizontal. Uh, extraction from other cultures and musics, but also uh, digging deep, deeper. The last paragraph now, uh, the above two examples have been discussed to demonstrate that musical talent and entrepreneurship in our time is driven by an extractive impulse. The artist has in front of him the limitless expanse of her own traditional forms, as well as the many light years of global music. In this, a Manoj Tiwari, native to the region, relates to his own culture very much in the manner of a Sneha Khanvilkar, the music director of Gangs of Vasipur. Uh, they are both seeking the vital minerals as raw material from various obscure or well-known musical locations for their creations. The question of course may be asked, and I want to end up with a question. Uh, does a local artist like Manoj Tiwari have a greater or proprietary right privilege, etc., ethically or otherwise, than a music director from Bollywood like Khanvilkar. <clears throat> In the current context, an artist must perform the following tasks. He must bolster and prove his talent as a miner of near inexhaustible musical material. He must prove his mettle as an investor in the production process, as well as the marketing of his goods. In all this, he of course receives a minimal but vital help from music companies willing to put their signature and stamp in the manner of gazetted officers in the gargantuan Indian bureaucratic system. We all go for these signatures, right, from uh, gazetted officers or MPs, etc.